Constance Connie Sumner does the morning dishes in her kitchen. It's a nice house, and it looks as if she has a loving family. Her son, Charlie, lays on the floor playing video games. Her husband, Edward, pops his head in and says good morning. She comments that his sweater's on inside out, and he jokes that it was done on purpose. As Edward gets ready for work, Connie asks Charlie if he's brushed his teeth. He lies and says that he has, but she doesn't believe him and forces him into the bathroom to do it properly. As she helps her son get ready, Edward complains about stock prices, one in particular that he was going to buy, which she talked him out of. He doesn't seem angry, just a little upset. Connie appears far too busy to care. As Edward and Charlie leave the house, they open the door and take note of the intense storm brewing outside. Edward suggests that Connie stays home today, but she says that she has to pick up some stuff for Charlie's birthday. Edward jokes with his wife as he leaves. She smiles and shakes her head. It's clear that their marriage, their family life, is happy and quaint. Connie heads into the city on her own. Although her shopping trip goes fine, she finds herself caught in the storm while heading home. It's ferocious, blowing an intense gale. She tries to hail a taxi, but none pull over. Her hands are full of bags, which threaten to blow away in the ensuing storm. Just down from where Connie walks, Paul Martle leaves a bookstore. He has a dozen books stacked up in his arms, and he doesn't see Connie coming straight for him. Neither does she. The wind has him, and before either know what's happening, Connie walks right into Paul and knocks him down. Paul chases after Connie's dropped things as she helps pick up his books. She then asks Paul to help her wave down a taxi, but none pull over. He apologizes to her and jokes around a little. It's only now that Connie notices how attractive Paul is. She tries not to make it obvious, but it really is. Paul notices the cuts on Connie's knee, caused by the fall. He offers to run up to his apartment and grab a band-aid. She's grateful, and although she intends to wait outside for him, he convinces her to come upstairs. She does, knowing that she isn't going to get a taxi anytime soon. The apartment is large in size, but stacked full of thousands of books. He tells her he's a book dealer, and directs her to his bathroom. As Connie hurries to the bathroom, he makes them both tea. In the bathroom, Connie carefully applies the band-aid to her wound. She's a little clumsy, and it's clear that she's nervous about being in this handsome stranger's apartment. Back in the living room, Paul offers her tea, which she accepts. They talk for a moment, and although he doesn't say anything particularly important, Connie is more than a little enamored by his beauty. Cinema recap here. We've got a little challenge that'll take five seconds, and it will change your life forever. You ready? All you gotta do is like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and you'll receive 10 free years of good luck. It's as simple as that. Connie uses the phone to call him, telling them she'll be late. As she speaks, Paul appears beside her and puts an ice pack on her knee. His touching her clearly elicits a reaction, which Connie tries to ignore. Connie can feel the tension building between them and says that she must leave. Before she does, though, Paul offers her a book. The book is hidden among the stacks, and he directs her to it. He then asks her to read a specific passage, which she does. As she reads, he speaks the lines moving in closer and closer. The tension between them continues to build, and she hurriedly excuses herself from the apartment. Paul tells her she's welcome back at any time. Back home, everything's normal. Her son is high energy and excited. Edward is concerned about the wounds on her leg, and when she tells him about Paul, Edward doesn't seem concerned. He even jokes that they should send him some wine. Cheap wine. Later that night, Connie walks past the book that Paul gave her and reads it quickly, her mind going back to earlier. In the bedroom, Edward has a video camera out and records Connie as she gets ready for bed. They flirt, and soon the two are making out and having sex. They're clearly happy and in love. The next morning, Connie sends her son off to school. Alone, she wanders through the house and finds herself looking at the book that Paul gave her. As she flips through it, a small card falls out. She picks it up, reads it, considers. Connie takes the train to Grand Central Station, where she immediately heads for a bay of phone booths. She calls the number on the card, but hangs up. She considers again and calls a second time. When Paul answers, she makes an excuse about wanting to send him some wine as a thank you, but he suggests that she come and meet him. She goes to say no, but then gives in. At Paul's apartment, the heat between them is palpable. He stands close, helps her take her jacket off, flirts gently with her. When she spots a book written in braille, he holds her hand and helps her to read it. Connie can see what's happening and quickly excuses herself. Clearly feeling guilty, Connie goes and visits Edward at work. 
she lies about where she's been and what she's been doing. But then she says she bought him a new sweater. The moment he tries it on, he gets a call which he has to take. He's fired up about it, and Connie watches on idly. Later that night, she does the dishes as Edward packs up the table. They do so in silence. Edward watches Connie and even tries for her attention, but her mind is clearly somewhere else. Under the guise of bringing him muffins, Connie finds herself at Paul's house again. There's music playing, and he asks her to dance, an offer she takes up. They hold one another as they gently sway. Paul tries for a kiss, slowly moving his head in closer, but Connie denies him. She's on the verge of tears as she tells him it's a mistake, before quickly leaving his apartment. But she forgot her coat. She comes back in and Paul snatches her up, lifts her into the air and carries her into the bedroom. She doesn't resist. On the train heading home, Connie's distraught. Tears flow from her eyes as she remembers what she did. She was in bed with Paul. He slowly undressed her, and although she tried to fight him, she also clearly wanted him to keep going. As she remembers more and more, she cries harder. Paul removed her panties, and when she again tried to stop, he asked her to slap him, to fight him off. She did so, but this only made her want him more. Soon the two were having intense, passionate sex. Back on the train, Connie is still distraught, although it's hard to tell if she's upset with what she did or simply a little confused. She rushes to the bathroom, removes her panties, and desperately tries to clean herself. Meanwhile, Edward is leaving work with a colleague, Bob. He asks Bob about the meeting he had with Connie the previous week, one Connie told him about when she was really with Paul. Bob seems confused, and Edward assumes that he's just made a mistake. That night, Connie's awkward, and this time, Edward notices. He asks if Connie loves him, and she tells him that of course she does. Connie lives two lives. One is the loving mother and adored wife, happy to spend time with her family. The other is with Paul, who she sees more and more of. When they're together, she's clearly enamored with him, hypnotized by both he and the sex. Paul pushes Connie's boundaries. One day, he takes her to a cafe for lunch. She's nervous, not wanting to be seen, but he continues to play with her, trying to test her limits. Soon, the two are laughing and kissing like no one's watching, although someone is. We don't know who he is, but a random customer watches the two as if he knows Connie. She doesn't see. That night, Edward joins Connie for a bath. He tries to make love to her, but she stops him and leaves, saying she isn't in the mood. Edward's clearly upset by this. The next morning, as Connie gets ready, Edward takes note of the new clothes she's bought. He tries to organize to go into work with her, wanting to spend the morning together, but she lies and tells him that she has a beauty appointment that she forgot about. Edward then calls the beauty salon, confirming what he already knew. She never had the appointment. She's lying to him. On her way to see Paul, Connie bumps into an old friend, Tracy, and an acquaintance, Sally. Although Connie's desperate to see Paul, they convince her to come across the road for a coffee. She has no choice but to say yes. Once inside, she calls Paul to tell him where she is, and Paul, wanting some fun, sneaks across to the cafe. She tells him to leave, but soon they're in the stall having sex while her friends wait for their coffee. Once Paul leaves and Connie joins her friends, the conversation turns to affairs. Tracy had one once, and she tells Connie it's the worst thing she's ever done. This strikes a chord with Connie, and later on, when she's back with Paul, she begins to muse about what they're doing and how it can't go on for much longer. Guilt is starting to get to her. At work, Edward is forced to fire someone who works for him the same man that saw Connie in the cafe earlier with Paul. Distraught, the man tells Edward that he needs to keep an eye on his own family. This warning affects Edward, who later meets with a private investigator and asks him to follow Connie. That night, Edward tells Connie and Charlie that he has to go to Chicago for a few days. He also speaks of trust, and although it relates to the man he fired earlier, he's clearly talking about Connie. Connie and Paul go to the movies and end up making love in the theater. As they exit, the private investigator takes photos of him. Connie's late picking up her son. For whatever reason, this seems to hit her the hardest, and that night she smokes and cries to herself. She even calls Paul, looking like she might end it right now, but then doesn't. Edward meets with the private investigator who tells him about Connie's affair. Edward doesn't look surprised, but still as if he can't believe it. The next day, Connie goes into the city with the intent on ending things with Paul. It's raining, and as she hurries to find cover, 
she spots Paul with another woman. She follows him into a bookstore and confronts him, shouting and yelling. Paul drags her to his apartment and although she tries to end it then and there, soon the two are having intense sex in the hallway. She's addicted to Paul and can't control herself. Edward goes to visit Paul. It's clear that even he doesn't know what he expects or what he wants, just that he has to see for himself. After Edward reveals who he is, Paul invites him inside and the two have a drink. It appears that Edward is struggling to get his head around everything and with each new revelation about the nature of Paul and Connie's relationship, he becomes even more broken. But when Edward sees a snow globe that Connie gifted Paul, he loses it. Apparently it was a gift from Edward to Connie and where it at first looks as if Edward's going to collapse, he beats Paul over the head with the globe, killing him. Thinking quickly now, he wipes down the fingerprints from the apartment, collects the globe, and begins to wrap Paul's body up in a bedsheet. Connie calls Paul. The machine picks up, but she tells him that they have to end it, that guilt is killing her, that she can't keep doing this to her family. She sounds distraught and Edward almost looks as if he might forgive her right then and there. Edward stuffs Paul's body into the trunk of his car and then rushes to get to his son's play. There he sits with Connie as they watch their son. They hold each other and smile, looking like everything might actually be alright. That night, as Connie sleeps, Edward dumps Paul's body at a garbage site. He then takes the car to a car wash and bathes himself clean. The next morning, Edward's acting strangely and his wife notices. He asks her if she wants to move back to the city and she says that she likes it here. Edward looks dazed, but nods and agrees. Two police officers arrive at Connie's house to question her about Paul. He has been reported missing by his family, and Connie's number was on his desk. Connie lies to the police, claiming that she barely knows him. As she lies, one of the officers plays with a snow globe, one of many owned by Connie and Edward. Connie tells Edward about the police visit earlier. She lies again, acting as if she barely knew Paul, and is surprised that the police even wanted to speak with her. Edward knows she's lying, but pretends to be alright with it. Paul's disposed body is accidentally discovered by a garbage man. The police return to question Connie, and this time, Edward's there. Her lies begin to show as she claims she's met Paul at a fundraiser, which Edward confirms. She then says again that she barely knew Paul, and has never been anywhere near his apartment. They ask her about a parking ticket she got there a month ago, and she's forced to hurriedly lie about why she was there. When the police leave, she looks upset and extremely worried. Connie picks up Edward's coat from the dry cleaner. As she looks through his pockets, she finds photos of her and Paul together, taken by the private investigator. That night at a dinner party, one of the guests is looking over at Connie's snow globe collection. As she does, Connie notices that the globe she gave Paul has returned. She looks to Edward, who looks back at her. Both seem to realize what has happened, that the other one knows. Connie confronts Edward. In his rage, he admits that he killed Paul, but then he says that he didn't want to kill Paul, he wanted to kill Connie. It's a comment that strikes at them both, and slowly they start to pull away from one another. Connie talks to Charlie, who's upset with how sad she looks. Charlie then sits and plays piano with Edward as Connie looks over the snow globes. She finds a note from Edward, from when he first gifted her the globe. It tells her how much he loves her, that she's the best thing to ever happen to him. The remorse in Connie is clear as she goes from the notes to her husband and son, both bonding by the piano. That night, she burns the photos of her and Paul, reminiscing on all the times they spent together. Edward sits with her and she tells them that they're gonna get through this, one day at a time. And indeed, it looks like they might. They go to a party and try their best to forget. But on the way home from the party, Connie suggests that they leave the country and start again. Although Edward doesn't seem to agree, he plays along musing about where they might live and what they might do, so long as they're together. The two hold one another lovingly, suggesting that no matter what happens in the future, they're now in this together. Despite it all, perhaps their marriage is even stronger than it was before.